All right, Shalom. First and foremost, all praises to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Wa Rakakudash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth, no matter where, whom they may be or what they may look like, pushing out this purified truth to the rest of the church who believe as well, including you women to the dead in Yahweh Shai also and the water to Yahweh Shai. Because without him enduring and going to that cross for the nation of Israel, none of this would even be possible, period, point blank. Okay? This is the book of Psalms, chapter 31. And I'm going to start at verse 3. For thou art my rock and my fortress, therefore for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. So we want to be guided by Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. But we also want to be guided in a sense that is not to our destruction. But it's towards our deliverance. We want to hope that the Lord guides and protects us as we go throughout our day-to-day -day lives. Okay? Which will also help us be patient. Because it's going to take patience being in this truth. Because um, we aren't to take matters into our own hands as much as we would want to sometimes. Okay? The people of this world, you know, they can throw all sorts of hissy fits and tantrums and react. But us in this truth... Where we're basically like a damn punching bag for this world. Okay? For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. Chapter 20. And verse 22. Say not thou, I will recompense evil. But wait on the Lord Yahweh, and he shall save thee. So as much as we want to recompense things, take matters into our own hand, we have to wait on the Lord. That's why we have to have hope that he guides our steps so that we're not led to our own devices. Okay? Which could ultimately lead to our destruction. Okay? Say not thou, I will recompense evil. But wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. So... Your boss been giving you a hard time at work, so you've been plotting on him. <laughs> so you creeping up. You know, you, you found out where he lived. You creeping up out the bushes with a with a dang uh <laughs> with, with a with a damn Jason machete and start slicing dude up, man. Cause you <laughs> cause you, he been giving you hell at work. Okay? You know, we gotta we gotta wait on your how by show me how was shot. Okay? So we got to have that patience. We got to suffer. And I know it don't feel good, man. But um, one thing that helps me on top of like prayer, you know, you got to have a sense of humor, man. You got to understand that when we catch hell and we go through things, it's not going to feel good. But you got to have the ability to, to um, kind of laugh your way through it, man. Because stress kills, man. My grandma on my, uh, on my dad's side, man, she died in her 60s. And it was all due from stress, okay? Because she was seeing how a lot of our men in the family were just in and out of prison. Just just a lot of problems that she couldn't handle mentally, and it killed her. So we, you know, we got to we gotta bear things, man. We got we to gotta make it to where this captivity, as much as we, we hasten the day, we want to get the hell up out of here. You got to make it to where you can still bear being here because nevertheless, you are right here, Okay? You have to be patient. Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. Okay? It's beneficial to wait on the Lord. It may not seem like that, but waiting on the Lord is for your benefit. Okay? Uh, Isaiah chapter 30, and verse 18. And therefore will the Lord wait, that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a power of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. So if you wait on Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, you're blessed. The Lord's going to exalt you in due time. He's going to get every last one of your enemies in due time. There's times you may pray, the Lord react right away. There's other times you pray, it seems like the Lord is uh, delaying. He's not delaying. Everything is on his time. Okay? Everything is on his time. And you better believe... If you have it in you to put, you know, to put curses on an individual, 
You don't think the Lord hates that dude too, seeing that you have his spirit on you? Okay? Even the scriptures tell you the Lord himself is long suffering. You don't think the Lord is suffering just because he's in the heavens and he's perfect, that he's not suffering this madness down here through the eyes of his angels? Okay? As much as that may seem like, oh, he, he doesn't understand, man. No, he understands. He gets it. He created all this. All right? But godly knowledge comes with godly sorrow. Waiting upon the Lord as much as you want to do things, that comes from godly sorrow. That doesn't mean if someone comes up to you and they slap the shit out of you, you just stand there like, oh, man, Lord, when you going when you going to hit them back for me? You know? That's not what that's saying. You know, you got some people out there, you got to freaking hold their hand and walk them to the park and show them how to chew bubble gum while walking at the same time. You know, some people, you got to give them every step through, okay? Because some people do lack that discernment. Anyway, Isaiah 30 and 18. And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is the power of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. Because just as the Lord's going to be exalted, he's going to exalt his men. Okay? You do something now, you're liable to go to prison sitting under the jail. You wait on the Lord, you can bypass all the traps of the devil. All the snares of the devil. Leave it to you. How about Shem Shai? And you have many people, they have a problem with that. Because they don't understand that the Lord is going to do something far worse than what we can do. It's not a matter of letting people get away with it. Okay? A serpent doesn't always attack right away. Okay? Again, a serpent does not always attack right away. Okay? Period. Romans, let me see if I can find this verse. Okay, it's uh, Romans 12 and 9. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. So don't be trying to go out of your way and look crazy because you're trying to go against what the scriptures say. You're trying to take matters into your own hand, create this carnal army, go into the shooting range so that you can try to take down Esau. You're out of your damn mind, okay? Vengeance is the Lord's. Yahweh Shai is going to repay all of our enemies. Yahweh is going to use Yahweh Shai to pay back all of our enemies along with the band of holy angels. And guess what? Whoever the elect men may be when they get those new bodies, they're also going to be used as vessels of destruction, but not while in these bodies, unless the Lord decides to give you spiritual powers on this side, which that's going to happen too for some of us. Okay? So we have to wait on Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Let's go to the book of Micah. So the Lord's vengeance, it's not going to be some, some laid back vengeance, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be some heavy judgment coming. This is uh, Micah chapter 5 and verse 15. And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. So the Lord's going to do things you can't even imagine, that you can't even do. Okay? The Lord is going to do things out of this world. He might even make a person implode after a laser hit him just to make it look, look, uh, <laughs> look, uh, What's the word? Just just outer worldly. Just to do something that man can't do. Okay? The Lord's going to do things that we just can't do. We're, we're, we're carnal men. We want to react. We want to do things right away. And there's times, you know, you, it eats you up so much, you, you can't even hold it back in your, in your, uh, your face. Okay? Micah 5 and 15. 
and I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen. So starting with uh, Yeehaw and the rest of these nations. Okay, and two thirds are considered heathen right now also. Such as they have not heard. Okay, so the Lord is coming back with some serious fury, man. Things that we can't even fathom. So we got to wait on him. See, the scriptures, man, you ain't got to be all deep, man. You, you know what I'm saying? Just, just break the scriptures down, man. Uh, Sirach chapter 35 and verse 18. For the Lord will not be slack, neither will the mighty be patient toward them, till he have smitten and sundered the loins of the unmerciful. Who's the unmerciful? Starting with Esau, man. Down to the rest of these nations who partake in our downfall. Okay? And repaid vengeance to the heathen till he have taken away the multitude of the proud. Oh, and you know Yeehaw is proud. Okay? Proud to be a Babylonian. And broken the, scep the scepter. I always get that word messed up. Of the unrighteous. Till he have rendered to every man according to his deeds, and to the works of men according to their devices, till he have judged the cause of his people, and made them to rejoice in his mercy. Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction, as clouds of rain in the time of drought. So the Lord is going to pay back the heathen man. And not only is he going to do it, he's going to do it on his time. And when he does that, we're going to receive mercy. Okay, if we be of the elect. But ultimately, all Israel will, will receive mercy because the kingdom of heaven is for Israel. Okay? So the unmerciful, being Esau, they're not going to receive mercy by the Lord. In fact, let me pull up something else in the book of James. I believe it is. Or right, this is James chapter 2 and verse 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. So because you devils haven't really shown any mercy unto us when the Lord judges you, he's not going to show mercy unto you. Okay? So we know that the Lord's going to bring judgment. It's just, you know, sometimes it gets difficult. Being in this flesh, you have to wait. But that's a part of the battle. Part of this battle is is waiting this is a different fighting style man okay this isn't a uh you know a react first fighting style this is a fighting style that requires a lot of patience okay and a lot of putting yourself in subjection when it comes to doing things that could uh you know potentially get you put to death because you're, you're taking matters into your own hand. James 2 and 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy. That have showed no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Now we understand the Lord's coming. But this is the spirit you may find yourself in. I'm going to close it out with this man. You may find yourself in this spirit. Okay. This is Psalms 94 and 3. Lord how long shall the wicked. How long shall the wicked triumph. Okay, so here it is, we're waiting on the Lord to avenge our enemies, but then we're, we're wondering, you know, how much longer, you know, we get weak, there's times, man, you don't even know if you're going to make it through the day, there's times you don't even know if you're going to uh, <laughs> drop dead, because you might be feeling so down, you know, these things happen, but we got to fight, man, We th this is a mental battle, this is a mental fight, okay, surrounded by our enemies, man. You think this is easy? Of course not. It's not supposed to be easy, but we're men. You know, the Lord is, is with us, man. And whatever comes our way, if we be those men, we already won. The battle is ours. <laughs> Psalms 94 and 3. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things? And all the workers of iniquity boast, them thing, boast themselves. They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. So again, we got to wait, man. And we, we get in that spirit, you know, how long, man? How much can we take? But that's where the patience comes in. The prayer and all that comes in. Because if we didn't have those things, we would flip out. We would go 
crazy and do something that's really uh, out of season. Okay? So, just know the Lord got us, man. All of our enemies will be destroyed. Keep putting those curses up on them. Okay? Keep praying. And if it doesn't happen right away, which can irritate you, you know, that's irritating. You know, you want to see your enemies fall. But remember, they are going to fall. It's not a matter of if. It's just they are going to fall. When are they going to fall? That doesn't matter. Just know they are going to fall. Okay? So, Kahala, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wa, Rakakodash. And until my next lesson, Shalom.